Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday, April 5th, 2020, as we continue sheltering in place because of the COVID-19 virus. This Sunday, we encounter the paradox that defines our faith. Jesus Christ is both glorified King and humiliated servant. We wave palms in celebration as Christ comes into our midst, and then we follow him on the path that leads to the cross. Thank you for being with us today, either on AM 600, FM 93.5, or through the YouTube link on our Facebook page. Our radio broadcast and altar flowers today are both given to the glory of God and in loving memory of her parents, Donald and Audrey Anderson, by Karen, Hannah, and Sarah. We thank the Anderson family for their gift. We want to thank everyone who continues to send in their offering each week, though we are unable to gather as a congregation at present. We do have a few announcements, and we wanted to let you know that Don Aronson took a fall this week and ended up in St. Francis Hospital. It looks like he's going to be moving to rehab for now, so if you'd like to send a card, why don't you plan to send it to Ralph and Jean Peterson's home, and they'll make sure that Don receives your well wishes. And today we're recognizing four birthdays. Ralph Zinker is turning 81 on Monday. Esther Zims is 87 on Tuesday. June Sandville, 81 on Wednesday. And Mary Jo Roll, 85 on Friday. Congratulations and many blessings, Ralph and Esther and June and Mary Jo. This morning, I wanna thank Pastor Dennis Mayette over at Emmanuel Lutheran Church Bethany's order for palms was canceled, but Emmanuel's was not, and Pastor Dennis graciously provided me with palms for our service. Finally, there are many people to thank for their hours of work putting together our Passion Reading Worship Service. Our organist, Bill Van Affen, and our musicians, John Beck and Kim Beck. Our many readers, Michael Caven, Carol Beck, Elizabeth Moberg, Shane Dix, Sue Roll, Craig Aho, Gail Bradley, and Matthew Caven. Assisting ministers, Sarah Beck, Rosemary Hendrickson, and Aline Norkley. Our hymn leaders, Sarah Beck and Carol Beck. And we thank Marcy Caven, who is providing special music. For those listening on the radio, you may notice the sound of wind when Marcy sings. She sings Healer of Our Every Ill, and that's because she's been recorded outside. There's even a bird that chimes in on the song. Finally, I want to thank Dave Moran, who did our sanctuary recordings, and Kira Beck for putting together all the pieces of our YouTube video, as well as sending the audio recording to the radio stations. My name is Pastor Terry Frankenstein, and we welcome you to worship today. Well, good virtual morning, Bethany kids. I want to say hello to Emma and Jace, Harper and Hattie, Aline and Andon, Alex and Jack, Lonnie and Landon, Odin, Tommy and Emmett. And we're thinking of Kira, Cash, and Jackson too. Kids, I know your Sunday school teachers and your music teachers miss you all. I'm the new pastor and we don't know each other very well, but I can tell you I miss having you in church with me on this special Sunday. Here's why. It's Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday when we all take a palm from in back of the church and we bring that palm frond to our seat with us and we wait and once the pastor has blessed the palms, then the pastor and the kids get up and we walk around the church and we wave the palm fronds while the congregation is singing, 
all glory, laud, and honor. Just a beautiful song. It's almost like we're in a parade around the church, and it goes through all the verses of the song. It's fun, so I would love to be doing that. You know, we do this as a way of remembering the day that Jesus came into Jerusalem as a king. He was famous by then. He had been healing all kinds of sick people, and he had been feeding the hungry. He even raised someone from the dead. And people were so excited that he was coming into town that when he rode his donkey into Jerusalem, they took off their coats and they laid the coats in front of the donkey. It was almost like a red carpet. And then they were waving their palm fronds and they were saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Must have looked like a parade back then. And that's what it would look like if you were at church with me this morning. We can't be together, but if you want to in a little bit, what you might consider doing when we're singing all glory, loud and honor, you can put your hands up in the air and you can wave them and you can march around your house and you can remember that Jesus is King. Let's pray. Gracious God, let us join with people from 2000 years ago who waved their hands to honor their King. All the people who shouted Hosanna back then because Jesus is still our hope and our salvation, and it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Now, how about a virtual poem? Thanks, kids. Hang tight now. We'll be singing together soon. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our processional gospel reading this morning is from Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen.
as we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 50, beginning with the fourth verse. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in singing our gospel acclamation. Supper. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your home with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe is the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which I pour out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. <laughs>
Gethsemane. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. denial. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword shall perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and, going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, 
so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, prophecy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, you also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he came out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went out and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. When the then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me.
the sentence. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he re realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to him, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. <laughs> Thank you.
the crucifixion. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he could not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama subachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many of them. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified, and they said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were there also, looking on him from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee.
evening there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Were you there? I bring you grace and peace and mercy from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we've packed a great deal into our regular worship time, which is how we often approach the day we refer to as the Sunday of the Passion. We began with the Palm Sunday portion, entering Passion Week with the story of Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem on a donkey, along a road carpeted in cloaks and palms. Jesus entered the city to shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. They were jubilant cries back then, all glory, laud, and honor. The triumphal entry lasted only a short while before it was followed by six passion readings. Judas's conspiracy and the Last Supper, Jesus' agony in Gethsemane, the betrayal, trial, and Peter's denial. We heard as Jesus was sentenced to death and tortured. The crucifixion was dreadful and the burial brought things to an end. The full weight of Jesus' passion story has always been repeated for us during Holy Week, but this year, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, there will be no echoing of these passion accounts within our sanctuary. 
This year, we will deeply miss gathering on Monday Thursday when the pastor places hands on each head and we hear the words of absolution. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. We lament that we cannot hear Christ's words of institution and share in the Lord's Supper. And we will not experience the powerful stripping of the altar during the reading of Psalm 22, departing in silence. Monday, Thursday, we will not be together. This year, we grieve that we cannot gather for the Tenebrae of Good Friday, reading the Passion according to John, as we observe a bare altar and focus on the meaning of the cross. We will miss extinguishing the candles and being startled at the loud noise that symbolizes the death of Christ, the closing of the tomb and Christ's descent to the dead. We will not depart in silence after gathering on Good Friday. This year, we long for a king who will come into our lives to save the day. Someone who will ride into our world amid shouts of Hosanna, which in the Hebrew literally means save now. Hosanna, save now. In these moments, we have such grief because nothing is the same. Work, church, funerals, weddings, school, sporting events, vacations, graduations, medical appointments, hospitalizations, visits to nursing homes and shut-ins. And there are many who are struggling with financial worries. We won't know the pandemic's full economic impact for months to come. We're feeling anxious and stressed, even frightened at times because of the hardships and challenges facing us. We have a great deal of uncertainty as to how this virus will affect this community in the weeks ahead. All that has come at us in such full force has made us terribly vulnerable. Yet there is good news today, brothers and sisters in Christ. This holiest of weeks in the church year reminds us that it is in our weakness and vulnerability that God chooses to meet us. In spite of this pandemic, know that God loves you. God is with you and for you, always on your side. God comes to us not in might, but in vulnerability and weakness to embrace us and care for us. God in Christ, this day and every day meets us at the cross and heals us of our every ill. Amen. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know our fears and sadness, grace us with pure peace and gladness, spirit of all comfort, fill our hearts. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. In the pain and joy, beholding how your grace is still unfolding, give us 
call your vision God of love, healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, as our world struggles to accept the profound changes in our lives due to, due to the COVID-19 virus, help us to continue proclamation of your faithfulness. May our faith be deepened and our trust strengthened through this time of separation. By your spirit, give us gentle and comforting words to speak that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, in the midst of our worries, let us not forget to care for your beautiful creation as the earth moves towards a new season. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, drive away the fear and anger that may rise to the surface during this time of anxiety. Help us to turn toward one another in love and kindness. Give courage and wisdom to our leaders that they might act with purpose and compassion. Bring peace and hope to those who are vulnerable in prison. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, send your saving help to all those who are anxious, worried, and to those who cannot sleep. We pray for the healthcare workers who are at the forefront of the response. Heal those suffering the health effects of COVID-19. Give comfort and hope to all suffering its economic effects. Tend to all who cry out for relief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those with special needs today, including Don Arnson, Kenneth Barasa, Dixie Lindstead, Faye Nyquist, Bishop Dale Skogman, Karen Peterson, Sandy Flynn, Debbie Karn, Jane Mulvaney, Marion Nye, Sherwood Taylor, Arlene Karn, Alice Jensen, 
Doris DeGrave, Paul and Jill Baum, Jan Boucher, Dorothy Erickson, and those who are listed in the bulletin, and those who we named before you now, either aloud or in the time of, this time of silence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for all who will feel great loss at being unable to attend worship during this Holy Week. Yet in all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, when we breathe our last breath, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these in all of our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the sight of peace in a way that works for you and those you are with today. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Receive this blessing. May the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Please join in our sending song, Through the Night of Doubt and Sorrow. <laughs> Thank you.
peace. Christ is with you.